Hey, you're at Steve Tech. I'm Steve, of course. And today I wanted to talk to you about valve to piston clearance and how to accurately measure it, where the spot is that you actually measure it at, and why uh, the minimum clearances are what they are. And what is a normal minimal clearance? So, as first off, this, we'll start here like on this SMX motor. Um, and I'll give you some illustrations of uh, what we're talking about. So this this particular piston is like 50 in the hole, etc. But um, for this combination, and as you can see here, where the valve pocket is at, oops, where the valve pocket's at, and then how deep that valve pocket is. Now, let's go over here and look at this piston and valve, and I'll show you exactly what's going on when you're doing this. Okay. So here's our piston and rod setup. Here's our valve, there is our valve piston interference fit there, okay? Anything that is around this area here is actually the radial clearance. So we'd like to have, in general, I like to have about 50 thousandths of radial clearance. So that's how far in between the valve and the pocket, this side, not here, but actually radial on the side of it. Okay, so this 50 thousandths, that's a good general number all the way around. Now, we'll cover the intake here first because the exhaust is actually a little bit easier. And then we'll actually go back and I'll explain some stuff to you on uh, that 50 thousandths in a hole because it actually matters. Alright, so number one thing is that most people want to put way too much intake to piston clearance. I'm sorry, intake valve to piston clearance in here. So let me show you what's actually going on. The reason why we can get away with tighter clearance on this end is because the valve is actually opening up as the piston's going down. Okay? So piston comes up top dead center, the valve just starts to open, and then the valve actually chases the piston down as it's as it's moving. Okay? So that's why we need that little bit of radial wall clearance right through there we don't make it exactly perfect we need to open that up a little bit but what do we want to have for this piston to valve clearance because this pit this valve is actually chasing it down it's not coming up and getting all upset or anything so it's actually chasing it now the other thing to understand too why we don't need to have why in particular on the intake valve why we don't need to have a lot of uh, piston to valve clearances that when dynamically when the valve shuts is you'll always see the valve actually bounces so it comes up it shuts and it bounces now if for some miraculous reason the piston was coming up at that particular time and mathematically it was possible uh, i mean I, that could be the reason why it would hit but it can't bounce that much okay now that's that's a ill every valve is going to bounce and then really well designed asymmetrical lobes uh, really desi well designed even if it's on spintron not spintron sometimes just trial tested um, you're trying to eliminate that bounce because you, that bounce is also valve seal if this is closing it should be closed pistons coming back up we want it sealed and tight if this thing bounces the more it bounces on the valve seat the more pressure will go back up through the intake that's not what we're talking about here, but the piston's way down here. That's just another uh, reason of valve control and valve spring control. Since this valve is opening as the piston is going down and chasing it, it's on the opening ramp of the cam lobe, which is easily controlled. It's the, it's the closing ramp that's our problem child. That's always the problem child in a camshaft and valve train is the closing not necessarily opening it doesn't lose control at the opening and then at peak lift or any area in there the piston is way away from the valve it never has any issue there if it ever lost control the only possibility of losing uh, control would be on that closing ramp and since the piston's nowhere near it there nowhere near it at peak lift that's why we can run something tighter now go back over here and i'll show you something a little interesting on this motor I just showed you, or with just this thing is 50 thousandths in the hole. Now we talked about uh, piston design and decks 
uh, I can't remember which video it was that we talked about in the perfect world this clearance would be absolute where this piston would just come up and keep carbon clean off of the cylinder head area it would actually touch the cylinder head touch the cylinder head okay that would be absolute perfect oh, I think we talked about it on a quench deal that's what it was if you wanted that would be absolutely perfect if it was touching so back in the day when we did uh, NH, when I did NH Ray Pro Stock stuff I learned this and it was always an interesting thing I'm just giving you round numbers so it's easier to, to do but I do remember the actual valve to piston clearance because we spent a lot of time making this valve to piston clearance perfect I'll tell you why in a second but we always were shooting for 35 thousandths 35 thousandths cold rolling over with lash set it up we would check that that valve to piston clearance and made sure that uh, spinning over by hand that it was 35 thousandths. In that particular motor at NHRA Pro Stock at the time, different now, I have no idea what they're doing, but at the time, the piston was 50 thousandths in the hole, just like what this SMX motor is. So the piston was 50 in the hole. We had 35 thousandths of clearance. But running down track, take the engine apart, we noticed that the pistons were just touching combustion chamber, which is perfect, absolutely perfect. But that would mean what? Start thinking about the math here. This whole thing grew 50 thousandths. The piston moved up 50 thousandths. We only had 35 thousandths of clearance here. So dynamically, the engine actually ran at negative 15 thousandths of clearance negative it was hit, hitting but would never see any indication because everything that's happening here is a latent effect it is slow it's behind things are stretching timing belt stretch timing change stretch uh, camshafts twist crankshafts twist everything that's going on there is slowing down and has this uh, latent, might be a wrong word, but latent effect where it's actually behind what it is, just in a static rotation. Just statically sitting here checking parts, but dynamically, it's lagging. It's behind, everything's behind. It just is what it is.